Okay, good afternoon. Um, my name is Andrew Smith Lewis. I'm from a Silicon Valley company called Serago, and I'd like to talk to you today about our personalized learning system. And I'm going to show you a live demo of the system in action, but before I do that, I wanted to give you a little bit of background about our company and why we're doing this. So hang on one second. My resolution's a little bit different. Hold on. And there we go. Okay. So we are the standard for personalized learning. How many of you are familiar with personalized learning? Ooh, good. <laughs> How many of you heard of adaptive learning? Okay. So basically what we do is we are the intersection of human memory and machine learning. And the company I founded about 13 years ago is focused on really leveraging a lot of applied research taken from the neuro and cognitive sciences to improve and accelerate learning for any content. So let me tell you a little bit about why we do what we do. Um, our background and interest, whoops, sorry. Why we do what we do, we are very, very passionate about helping people remember anything that's important to them. And we want to basically help people create this concept of durable, flexible, and usable knowledge. We accomplish this by leveraging years of research in cognitive and neuroscience into how we actually learn. So we're not about the what, the content, but we're about how people learn to remember. And what we've created is a content agnostic platform. And what that platform is capable of doing is basically two things, personalizing the access to the information and quantifying what people know. So accelerating your ability to get stuff into your head and then the ability to quantify, to know what you know is really important for us. So how we basically accomplish this, we're sitting at the intersection of, of the internet and learning sciences. And we think the impact on education is obviously massive and potential. Our secret sauce is really the science of learning and memory. And what we've done is developed, patented, and battle-tested an algorithm that can help anyone learn anything from astronomy to, to medicine. The concept is, is, comes from a lot of applied research dating back to 1886. Erman Ebbinghaus basically coined the concept of the forgetting curve or the learning curve, which simply states that when we learn information, about 65% of what we learn is gone within an hour. You're all familiar with this concept. We all are from being at school. So we basically, and, and, and what he did was give birth to the whole modern field of learning and memory and, the, and the, uh, the research behind learning and memory. So what my company has done is created a proven algorithm um, to counteract forgetting in a very interesting way, which I'll describe to you when showing you the product. It's content agnostic. Again, we've deployed this across um, multiple domains of content, and it's also platform agnostic. So about 50% of our use is actually on mobile devices. So we're really big on on-demand, anytime, anywhere learning. Um, our partners in the ecosystem of people that we work with, we've worked, we power courses right now at MIT, at Harvard, the University of Texas. We um, are powering all of ASU's Global Freshman Academy. We work with traditional publishers such as Elsevier on the health science side. Um, we work with McGraw-Hill and Cengage that are also top publishers. And we're backed by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation where we've received significant grants to use our technology to help at-risk and underserved students accelerate their learning. So let me jump in and show you what the platform looks like. And okay, so right now I'm logged onto our site. You can check out the site on your own. It's serago.com. And I'm logged onto the site, and I see a constellation of courses that I'm studying. So I'm studying everything from a course in robotics and schematics to something on the art of decision making to the instrumentation of an MD-80. So a whole variety of different courses that I'm studying. And each one of these courses is plotted along this memory continuum. So I can see, for example, when I last studied this content. So this will show me the historic view of when I studied the material. Or more interesting, the upcoming schedule. This, so this shows me that I've got a whole bunch of courses I need to catch up on. And then I've got some content pushed out to November, December, and May of next year. So how many of you went to college? OK. Remember being students, and remember sitting down with a textbook, and part of your brain is always thinking, what should I do now? What do I focus on? Where am I strong? Where am I weak? All those cognitive decisions about your study, you have to make on your own. And that's a tough thing to do. Some people are really good at that sort of self-paced instruction. Some of us aren't so good at that. And so what this system does is basically supplant that cognitive faculty. We've got a better way of measuring what you know and predicting when you should see it in the future. And by following this schedule, 
people who use our technology are capable of just rapidly gaining information. So let me show you what it, what it looks like in, in practice. So I've got a course here. This belongs to Elsevier, the health science group. And what they've done is married our technology for nurses and nurse practitioners who are training in the field. And so this is a course on orthopedic surgery. And you see this constellation of dots. Let me start this up. Oh, I should have brought Bill's. Let me just grab the Wi-Fi. It's always the challenge of a live demo. Thank you. It might just like you. You got closer and the whole thing loaded, so I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what that was. So this constellation of dots shows me the individual items in this course. I have 68 items that are being tracked on a very granular basis. And I can see that I have some content here, for example, in level four. You can see this is an item on tendons and ligaments. I saw it 12 days ago. My next review is not for five months on that content. Whereas here, I've got something on some part of the body. I saw it eight days ago, and my next review is actually in two hours. So on an item by item basis that's been tagged by a subject matter expert, this thing knows what I should see and when. Kind of make sense? So it relieves you of the burden of trying to figure out what you need to know. It says I have six fading memories now. And again, I can see, for example, when I last studied the content or my upcoming schedule review, which shows me all this stuff pushed out into the future. Difficulty on an item by item basis. What's hard for me as opposed to what's subjectively rated as difficult. Study time, et cetera. So if I launch the app, I'll just show you what it looks like briefly. I launched the system. It looks across those 68 items, and it says, what's the stuff that Andrew really needs to see right now? The spinning is not part of the memory process. We'll just give it a second. I think this thing liked Bill. Bill, can you hold this up in the air and go like this? Give it one second, hold on. While that's loading, let me show you what this content looks like. So I'll show you some slightly different content what the schematic of the content looks like. So in the system, so here's some content on the instrumentation for a McDo uh, an MD-80. And it's got these templates of items. So you can imagine if you're training to fly an aircraft, there's a lot of stuff you just need to know in foundational knowledge. And what the system does is help you crystallize foundational knowledge. So for example, the descent checklist of the MD-80, or the difference between a cumulonimbus cloud and a nimbostratus cloud, or the cockpit and all of the different instrumentation and how that instrumentation works. Discrete foundational knowledge. That's what the system is very good at helping people build. And so the, the content creators put the structure knowledge into the system, and then it creates this pattern of engagement. And so here in the background, this is loaded up. It says, do I know the three phases of bone healing? I'll say I don't know them, and it will present them to me. It'll show me inflammatory, reparative, and the remodeling phase. There may be some notes that provide some background. So this is where the subject matter expert has said, this is something very, very key for people to walk away knowing, and it's got all that foundational knowledge there. I'll go on to the next one. With a blank, the bit blade moves in and out of the hand piece. I think I know what that is. It's a reciprocating saw. I get that correct, and I move on to the next item. And in the background, what the system is doing, blank is the process of bringing the bone fragments into anatomical alignment. That is called reduction. In the background, what the system is doing is it's looking at not only do I get an interaction correct or not, but how confident was I that I knew what that was? What was my latency of response? And what was my pattern of seeing this item up until now? It uses all that data to figure out what I know now and when I should see it in the future. And it does this for hundreds of thousands of people on a very granular basis. Here's a, a schematic of parts of the body. Do I know the bone? I think that's the fibula. Yippee, I'm correct. You kind of get the idea. So this is what it looks like in medicine. Here again is the schematic of an aircraft. I'll fire this up in the background so we can take a look at that. You can see my unique pattern of learning and forgetting there. And it will load up in a second. While that's loading in the interest of time, I'll show you some other content. So here's some content on robotics, the schematics of a robot. And you can imagine this could have been you know, the blueprints of a tank. This could be any sort of foundational knowledge that you want people to walk away remembering, dead to rights. Make sense? So here I am looking in the aircraft. Any pilots in the audience? 
Oh, come on. No one can, fl can anybody fly an aircraft in the audience? Anybody know what this is down here? Let's take a guess. Um, I think it's the DME readout. Whoops, it's the fuel quantities. You get the idea. So this can be any sort of image, can be loaded up in the system, video, audio, et cetera, and off you go. Lastly, what I want to show you is what happens when you're on the admin side. So I've loaded up a live set. These are actual students. So imagine now you're an instructor in the field or you've deployed people and they're using the system. This visualization shows me my actual students. So this is a live course in economics um, at a university and I can see I've got 68 of my students have already reached level two. Um, 93 of them are still in level one. I can hover, hover over an individual student and look at their individual progress. I can see when they all last studied in the system. So I can see I've got some students that were in there a day ago, a couple hours ago, et cetera. I can see their upcoming schedule of review. Difficulty on a user-by-user -user basis. I can see for this, most of my students find this content moderate. A couple of people are finding it hard. I can look at their study time, how much time they've invested with the content, et cetera. And over time, this develops a unique profile for all the users to really map out what they know. So I will leave it there. Um, any questions about the system or anything you'd like to see? So uh, all I remember is you were trying to explain this to me on the phone as we were, to, <laughs> was it going to fit? And now it's, it's so intuitive. Now I get what you were saying. Is this is, I, I track the knowledge that I've learned and then I, it should tell me when I need to do a refresher. Yep. And when it's. Absolutely. And that algorithm is based on? The algorithm is based on a whole bunch of uh, research. Okay. Um, for, it's based on some seminal research into learning and memory. And then it's been tweaked over um, probably at this point about 4 million unique users in Versus the system. Versus the complexity of the knowledge and, and if uh, it's in use or? Well, for the individual. Yeah. So it tailors okay. to use. So okay. what's, what's you know, easy for you might be very complex Got for it. me and vice versa. Right. And so what okay. the system is able to do is really figure out on an individual by individual basis what's difficult for them and how they should review that content in the future. Now, how are you, how do you push this out to, in your vision, how does this get out to the Army? What does it look like? Well, we're trying to figure that out right now. We're okay. working with some good folks who um, behind the scenes are helping us figure out how to get this requested okay. um, and into the right documentation, which is the challenge. I'll show you something interesting just for fun in the last couple seconds here. Because the platform is open, we have individuals who come on and create their own content. So here is a soldier who is studying for some promotion board exam, and he's entered his own content. So obviously for the military, it would be private content, but part of this play is public content where people can create and share uh, their learning. Any other questions? Can you describe the process where you would take existing online content for courses and integrate it with your platform? Yes. Um, so we created a series of tools, uh, templates, that allow a non-programmer to basically create content. So if I go back, to, for example, to, um, let's open one of these up. I'll go back to that aviation set. And uh, we'll show you what it looks like. So essentially, we've created some tools. We have certified third parties in doing this in bulk. So we have outside organizations that are really good at using those tools to create content. And then we've automated some of the process. So we've created some tools that can actually scrape structured data off the web. Uh, my connection's a little bit slow, but basically there's some very easy templates that lets you say, you know, what do you have? Are you starting with a base image? Are you starting with um, some passages of text? And basically, depending on what you've got, you use a template to, to edit that content. So it's pretty straightforward. Please. So on the nursing side, have you taken it as far as how successful are students in passing their nurse exams at the end? Not for school, but their licensure exam, the NCLEX. That's a very important question. So this is our first full year with Elsevier, and they have about 100 nursing textbooks deployed in the system in the field. So we haven't gotten back the data on how that's performed yet. Um, we do have um, some longitudinal studies that have been done in, in more of an academic in high school and college that speak to the efficacy of the system and helping people pass exams. But in the nursing field, we're very eager to see what that data looks like. And so this this is cognitive data, it's not the clinical application, the hands-on pieces. 
Is that correct? Right. So this would so the purpose of using it for Elsevier is to train people for the NCLEX. So their why is that passing that NCLEX exam. So we're we're looking to see if we can impact and drive outcomes for that exam. And uh, I'm very interested in long term. How does it really perform in the field, and how can people cut, keep up with continuing medical edu education, et cetera? So if you're interested, sarago.com, please check it out. My name is Andrew Smith-Lewis. It's been a pleasure and an honor to speak to you today. Enjoy the rest of AUSA. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew.